If you've been watching the channel a little while, you know that in the summer of 2019, my two sons and I moved here from the suburbs of Chicago. And then about a year ago, at the end of 2021, I made a video talking about some of the things I wish I knew before I moved here. I asked some clients that I helped move here from different parts of the country, and together we came up with these things and made that video. The thumbnail looks like this. And I'll put a link to that in the description below. But what I wanted to do is a little over a year later is make an update to that. I've helped a lot of other people move here and just some things of my experiences of living here, some things I wish I would have known beforehand. I hope it's helpful for you. Uh, my name is Jeff Valentino. I love helping people buy and sell real estate. If that's you, my contact information is below, but let's get right into it. Some of these are from me. Some of these are from clients that I've helped, but this first one is my non-scientific take on this. Um, it seems like about 40 or 50% of the people that I meet and talk to are from somewhere other than Winston-Salem. So they moved here from other parts of the country. And why I think that's important is one of the questions I get asked a lot when people are thinking about moving here is what's it like? They hear, you know, stereotypes about living in the South. And they have concerns about that, whether it's education or race relations or sweet tea. Well, spoiler alert, people in the South love sweet tea. That is true but they want clarification and have concerns about what's it like living in the South, especially if they're moving from somewhere that's, you know, in uh, the Northern or Northwest part of the country, they wanna know what is it like to live in the South. So I think with so many people moving here from other parts of the country, it's gonna make it a lot easier. And Winston-Salem is known for, you know, uh, innovative tech scene. We got Wake Forest University and other colleges. It's known as the city of arts and innovation. It's also named as consistently as one of the top places to retire. So you have young, old, educated, not educated from here, not from here. You're going to probably find your people. If you get out there and look for it, you're going to find your people. I found the city is to be really open and accepting from people from all walks of life. About half of the people that I run into seem like they're from somewhere else. I wish I'd have known that and I want you to know it. Maybe it'll put your mind at ease. Next one, there's a little bit of a hot take on this one, um, but I found that Greensboro and Winston-Salem aren't quite as different as I was led to believe before I moved here. And before people get upset at me and start emailing me and texting me all kinds of crazy stuff, there are some differences, sure. I actually made a video about that. That thumbnail looks like this. And I'll link that video in the description below too if you want to watch that. There are definitely some differences in between the two. But when I was doing my initial research, and a lot of other people see the same thing, is you know, you'll see really strong opinions if you ask 100 people. 50 will say Winston's better, 50 will say Greensboro's better, and there'll be really strong opinions on it. This is just my experience of living here, working in both, um, and managing a real estate office in Greensboro for a long time. I've just found that they're really, really similar. I think a lot of people would be happier in one or the other. They're, they're really similar. There are some differences, like I said, so check out that video, but it's not quite as different as I was originally led to believe. That's my take on it. Plus when you factor, you know, depending where you live, uh, they can be just 20 to 35 or 40 minutes apart. It's not uncommon for someone to live in one, work in another, or live in one and go visit the other. I mean, I love going to Greensboro for restaurants and things like that, or they have a little bit better shopping there. You know, it's I can be in downtown Greensboro in about 35 minutes, and I'm just west of Winston-Salem in Louisville, so I'm coming all the way across. It's really not much different than where I moved from, of traveling from, you know, one part of the of a suburb to almost my other part. I mean, that would take 25 or 30 minutes sometimes in and of itself with traffic. But that's kind of my take. I don't think they're quite as different as people would like to. If you want to talk about those specific differences after you watch that video, reach out to me. I'd love to talk you through some of those and see what makes sense for you. Next one is, I've had multiple clients tell me this and they say just how affordable it is and just more affordable than they originally thought. And I know that prices and especially home prices have gone up the last couple of years. I'm aware of all that stuff. But what I'm talking about is just the everyday little things. First, on housing, though, the median home price in Winston-Salem is still much lower than the national average. So housing here overall is still affordable. I know that prices did really go up, but still overall affordable. One of the big things they always talk about is the cost of gas. I find that it was much less expensive here than where I moved from. People tell me the same thing from other parts of the country. They also mention insurance and just a lot of other everyday expenses that contribute to an overall more affordable cost of living. Next one, if your kids are going to Winston-Salem for Scythe County Schools, when you move here, you should know that if they're riding the bus, the bus system is a little bit of a mess at the beginning of each year. I know some of that was exacerbated during the pandemic, but we moved here in 2019 we started that school year. It was still kind of a mess then. Of course, there were some differences during the pandemic when everyone went back to school, but 
just plan on that first week or two of giving some extra time. And there are a couple of times my kids waited and wait and wait for the bus. I actually ended up having to drive them to school. So if you work or you have meetings and stuff like that, you're going to want to want to plan around that. Give some extra time at the beginning of the year for the buses to get their system worked out. The good news is, is they continue to hire new bus drivers. And usually after that first week or two, things get ironed out for the most part and they start running much more efficiently. But just be aware during that first week or two of school, it gets a little hairy. Next one my kids wanted me to tell you is they don't have to cut the grass and take care of the yard as much from about November, December through about February. They really enjoyed that one. That was a big win for them. There's not much grass to cut because it does not go quite all the way dormant, but for the most part, you only have to cut it once or twice during those few months. They love that part, but they do have to rake a lot of leaves. If you're thinking about buying or selling a home in Winston-Salem, I'd love to be a resource for you. You can email me directly at jeff at govalentino.com. Thanks.